Good morning. This morning, what we're going to talk about is beer soap. Okay, so it is August here in Georgia, and um, August here in Georgia, that doesn't make any sense. It is August, and I am here in Georgia, and that may seem like a little early for making your fall line of products, but it's not. And as you well know, if you are a soap maker, you know that we have to get started making our products several months in advance. And um, since I do like to offer my beer soaps at Christmas time, then making them now is about right. So you want them to be nice and hard and cured um, by the time Christmas rolls around. So September, October is when you really want to be cranking out any of your Christmas or, you know, fall products. And I tend to not do necessarily Christmassy themed stuff, but doing like a beer or a wine soap to me is a nice novelty item to bring because at Christmas people are looking for unique items. Not everybody, but most people are. You're looking for something that's, you know, kind of cool and different. And I'm like winded because I'm having to like literally uh, squat back here because if I stood up, I would be like this. So I'm having to squat and apparently this is hard on me for some reason. Um, but I have you, I have you taped up with this um, to this window behind me because I don't have a good setup. But not that that's important. I just want you to know why I like sound winded, which I feel like I shouldn't be winded. I'm just sitting, sitting here, but I think it's the angle in which I'm having to lean in. But and my legs are like starting to give out. Okay. Um, anyway, um, so at Christmas time, people are looking for unique items. Most people are. So if you have your customers that normally buy handmade soap year round, um, you know, they'll buy at Christmas time as well. But you also have your customers that um, are not your customers, but you have potential customers that are out there that don't necessarily buy handmade soap. But if you have something like a beer soap or a wine soap and they have like a beer or a wine connoisseur in their family, then they will probably buy your product. And um, with that, then it's potential that you have just gained a new customer or two, you know, especially if they give it as a gift, because not only the person that bought it, but then the person that received it may really enjoy that soap and then come back for more. So, um, okay, I literally lost you guys because I got that stupid phone call that my vehicle's warranty is about to expire. I mean, ugh. I don't know if you guys get those or not, or if it's just in this part of the United States, but in Georgia, like most people that I know get this phone call like every day. It is literally, hi, we're letting you know your vehicle's warranty is about to expire. Like, what the crap? No, it's not. Actually, it already expired. It's not about to expire anything. It already expired. Anyway, um, so of course now I've lost my train of thought. Um, we were talking about gaining customers. So you'll potentially gain the customer that bought it and the customer that received it. So you kind of open yourself up to a new market. Like with me, the soaps that I make, I generally sell at farmer's markets and crafts fairs. And the people that buy at those types of venues may or may not ever see your product because, um, or did I say that wrong? The people that don't buy at those venues may or may not ever see your product because they don't go to craft fairs or they don't go to farmer's markets. But if they are given your product as a gift, then that may open up that customer to, oh, you know, that's pretty cool. They may come seek you out. So it's nice to have um, products, especially at Christmas time, that are novel and a little more, um, I guess, giftable. Um, so, uh, okay, so the, the reason why would you want to use beer? So I have read um, several articles and said that, you know, the hops in beer are known to be good for your hair and skin. So um, the question is, do those benefits survive saponification? I have no idea, <laughs> no clue, but um, I'm willing to make a bet that they do. Maybe not all of the benefits from the hops, but a good bit of them. And even if all of them don't survive saponification, then you at least have the label appeal of using beer or um, you get that subtle smell, it gives you a nice warm smell to your soap and it does give you a nice lather. And to me, using anything other than water within reason, obviously, is kind of cool in soap because it gives it 
something, it offers something else, something new, something different that like more than likely people are not going to be able to go to the grocery store and go pick up. If you're adding, adding in a, um, an additional like beneficial ingredient, that to me is what handmade soap is all about. Being able to be creative with it, um, put your spin on it, use what you want to in it. And especially using things that like big box stores or, you know, big box companies don't do, you know, um, they just want to make it as simple and as inexpensive as possible. Whereas handmade creatives, you know, we actually put care and consideration and, um, you know, add more luxury type ingredients into our products. So, um, now that I can stand up, let me make this. All right. Um, what we're going to start out. Oh, almost forgot the major point here. So when using beer in your soap, um, and you want to use it as your water portion. Okay. So, um, you're going to use your regular soap recipe. Um, you don't have to change your oil recipe at all. So if you already have a go-to soap recipe, use that. And, um, the two things that you want to do to your beer before you use it with your soap is if you're mixing it with your actual lye as your lye water, then you want to do two things. You want to um, take the carbonation out of it and you want to also um, burn off the alcohol or let the alcohol evaporate off. So there's two ways that you can do that. You can either do it on a pot, which is what I've done here. And you can see that it's in there and there is no fizz, nothing. Um, so I did mine on the stove. But if you don't want to do that, because some people say that, you know, burning the beer, you know, or like cooking it, then you may lose some of the beneficial properties. But um, I find that that's the, you know, you just, I don't know. I think that's just an easy way to do it. It doesn't take but a few minutes. You um, kind of burn that off. And I do it at a low temperature and make sure that there's no fizz left and that um, you burned off most of the alcohol. So you can either do it that way or the other way is the obvious way. You're going to just open your beer, let it sit on the counter for like 24 hours and make sure that it's good and flat. So then you can add it to your lye water at that time. And, but what I do is I actually make my lye water. And so this is my one-to-one -one ratio. And this is actually, um, my actually made with water. So, the reason I do that is, and this may or may not make any sense um, to some people, but this is just my thoughts on it. So when I add my lye water to my oils, that starts that chemical process of saponification. So your oils and your lye, they, you know, start to become soap. And once it starts emulsifying, those chem there's a chemical reaction. Obviously, it's not soap for a good 24 hours, but, you know, the, the, there's a chemical bond occurring. So I let that occur and I let my lye water with actual water go into my oils and get it to um, an emulsification like where it's, you know, pretty emulsified. And then I add my beer. And my reason behind that is I feel like it's the beer is less likely to be gobbled up by the lye um, or be affected, I guess. Um, it may or may not matter. It just in my mind, it makes more sense. So that's the way I'm doing it. Um, and it, you can actually mix your beer like straight with your lye, straight with your lye and that's fine. And it will give off an odor because I've done it and it gets, um, it's not burned, but it will turn dark um, a lot of times and you can really smell the beer at that point. Um, and when you use beer in soap, you can detect a tiny hint of the beer in soap, I mean, just a little bit. So you can use a beer fragrance oil, which I've done that in the past. Where is it at? Oh, this is the one I made last year and I have one left because I had it on top of my soap curing thing back there and I didn't see it. And that's the only reason I have one left. I just forgot it was back there. And this one was um, hot process, which is why the top is like this. But, um, and I usually make these in a loaf, but I had a little bit extra um, left over because I normally make my hot process batch bigger than my loaf that I put it in because I want extra soap and we usually use that for ourselves. And this was one of my extra ones, but I did sell these round ones as well. So um, I used a fragrance oil in this one and it smells just like beer. And I wanna say it was from 
Nature's Garden, and I want to say the name of it was beer, and it is spot on, smells just like beer, no joke. The night that I made this, um, I guess after being around the fragrance and just being in here in this enclosed space, that smell like came off on me because I was in my room and my son came in there and he stood next to me and he was like, why do you smell like beer? <laughs> and so he didn't think it was like a, you know, a soap smell or a fragrance smell. He thought I had been like drinking beer. Now there's anything wrong with that. It's just, he know I'm not a drinker and I never drink. So he, I guess it caught him off guard that I smelled like beer. But so if you need a straight up beer fragrance, this is your one nature's garden beer. Um, and a year later, it still smells pretty strong. So, and I'm sure if it was wet, it, you know, how sometimes your, your smells will really, you know, come out and come like bloom or whatever in water. I'm sure it would because it still smells um, pretty strong. So we're going to go ahead and get started in making this um, beer soap. So I hope this has been helpful so far. And if the tips were all you wanted, then that's good. I'm probably pretty much done with tips, I guess. Uh, but so I'm just going to go ahead and make it. All right. Let's see. I hope y'all can see okay. All right. It's hard to even think about fall because it is still 100 degrees here in um, Georgia, where I'm at. But it will come sooner rather than later. So I didn't heat my oils. I'm just going to stick blend them because I um, everything was kind of melted already just because it's kind of warm in here. Um, I do have an air conditioner, but I have it turned off, mainly so you can hear me. But there's been a few times I turn off my air and forget to turn it back on, so then, so then it gets hot in here. And um, when I leave and then I come back and like my coconut oil, it's right there. You can see it's kind of melted. So if you guys have seen any of my videos on my storefront, it's coming along nicely. We ran into some unexpected rotted flooring, which was really crappy. Um, we knew there was going to be an issue back there, but I didn't know how much of an issue it was going to be. And so we got to pull up all the subfloor in about a, I don't know, 10, I don't know, 200, 200 square feet maybe, or maybe less than that, 150 square feet of it, all the subfloor has to come up and we got to redo that. Um, and there's going to be some joists that have to be redone. So it's just an expense that I was not expecting. So I'm kind of disappointed about that. But, um, you know, fortunately we're not in a hurry uh, to do, to get the store open. I mean, obviously the sooner I can get it open, the better. But um, as of right now, I'm still working in my shed and selling at farmer's markets. Even when I open in the store, I'm still going to sell at farmer's markets and festivals and things like that. So, um, but you know, when you're paying utilities and, and paying for the store, um, you know, cause we got a loan, so I've got to pay the loan back. Um, so when you're paying on that, it's like you, I'd like to be able to use it, but, um, I also don't want to go into too much more debt getting that thing fixed up. So, um, it's going to be just like little by little, we'll get it going. But, um, let me see. I gotta, I'm gonna be out of frame here for a second. Probably I'm going to measure my, um, the beer out here. Hold on. And when you do a one-to-one -one ratio with your, uh, log water, it doesn't matter how much liquid you add. Um, you know, I mean, it matters, but not really like you could literally just do a one-to-one -one Y ratio, a lot of water and make soap that way, but um, you're liable to get your soap to trace too fast and uh, be, I don't know, really hard really fast and you might have trouble cutting it. I've never done that, but I'm sure you guys have, but I've never done it. But so I always add extra liquid. Um, that'll be almost exactly right. So, all right. And my lye water is still kind of warm actually. I just made it. Um, but it should be fine because my oils are cold. They're not solid, but they're cold. They're not hot at all. So, 
so I'm like, and I added silk to my lot of water. I don't know if you guys have ever done that, but it actually does make a difference to me in um, the way the soap feels and the way it lathers. It's really nice. All right, so, all right, like I said, I've got my oils here and I'm gonna use a strainer because um, you don't have to when you're doing your lot of water, but you can see there's like, um, I don't wanna pour it obviously. Um, a little bit of like what's called Lylent in there, which there's no danger in Lylent. It won't hurt anything, but um, it's just my preference. I don't like to put in there. I always, um, well, always is a hard word because there might be times I don't, but nine times out of 10, I strain my lye water to get any particles that are too big to fit through the, the strainer don't go in my soap. Uh, so let me grab that a little. Okay, this is the strainer that I use and um, works really well. It's not fancy, I don't know even where I got it, probably Walmart. So we're gonna use that and hopefully y'all can see okay. I can't pull this too much further because my table is only so far and I sure am not wanting to have this all down the front of me. <laughs> so I'm gonna pour that in and technically I should have on goggles. Anytime you work with soap, you should be, your arm should be covered and you should have goggles, eye protection. So um, this is not a video on the exact way to be protected when making soap because there's a lot of steps that I do that um, I would not advise you to do if you are new to soap making or even a seasoned soap maker because you can have accidents happen at any time whether you've been making soap for your first time or your gazillionth time, you can have an accident. So. I'm just saying, putting that out there. Don't like this. I should have goggles and stuff on, but I don't. So um, you want to always put your stick blender all the way to the bottom. And most of y'all probably already know this. Most of you guys that watch my videos have made soap. So I, I don't want to bore you guys with that. But just in case someone randomly come across this video that's never made soap before, you want your stick blender to the bottom so that it doesn't splash out, obviously, on your face. <laughs> stick blend this a whole lot just because um, my lye water was slightly warm to touch still so I feel like it may move kind of fast so, um, as you can tell already it's like a thin pudding consistency so I'm gonna go ahead and add my beer oh crap I hadn't even decided what fragrance I'm gonna use I think well I thought about using oh crap I was gonna add this too I was gonna add orange peel powder to it let me go ahead and do that shoot I got busy talking and forgot what I was doing so I'm going to add orange peel powder. I don't measure it. Just go with it. About that much. Maybe a little more. Let's do a little more. And what orange peel powder will do will give it um, a little bit of an exfoliation. I mean, not really. It just kind of gives it a little texture. Um, I mean, it's not going to be anything. Anybody would maybe even notice. Because I was thinking about doing this as an orange scent, like a blood orange. I've got some blood, blood orange uh, essential oil, and I think I'm going to add that. But I had not fully decided, but I guess I've decided now because I've already started mixing it. And like I was telling y'all in the other video not too long ago, is that's my biggest, um, I guess, uh, hurdle is deciding what fragrance oil or essential oil. Always feel like I'm gonna choose the wrong thing. Like on the beer soap, I feel like my gut's kind of telling me I should do something masculine, but then again, I'm thinking, I don't know, I've got some blood orange essential oil I need to use up. So we'll do that. And I guess I'm gonna add a little bit of, should I add mica? Okay, so I don't have a good like for blood orange, like a good orange, like all my oranges are turning pink for some reason. And this one is Mai Tai Orange Mica from Crafter's Choice, which um, which is fine, but it's just not like the orange I'm wanting it to be for this. I don't really have any other options. Um, I gotta make some decisions here. 
Be a planner, don't be like me. Okay, I'm trying to stay in frame here, <laughs> sorry. Okay, um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to decide what I want to do, because I, I wonder if I do blood orange, then I'm wanting to do, but I want it to be kind of natural looking too. So, what should I do? Let's see. Oh crap, I can't decide. I don't know if I want to add that or just leave it more natural, like with just the orange peel powder. Um, I don't know, I can't decide. Um, shoot, okay, I guess what I'm gonna do is, let's see. This is what I get for not um, planning very well. Now I'm like thinking, crap, I'm not sure what I want to do. Um, I was more thinking about making the video, honestly, is what, what was going on. And I got interrupted a couple times. I had to go in and make my son some lunch. And then, I, I don't know. So, let's see. Uh, if I do that, I'm thinking maybe if I do the orange mica with, this is brown, uh, actually. Um... This will kind of give the beer feel with this will give the orange feel but i don't know that i love those how that would look together um okay how about i do three all right so hang on And I've got to add my beer still. I haven't added that. So don't let me forget that. All right. Um, okay, I'm going to do orange here. Oh, crap. That's a lot. You should use a spoon to get out your micas. <laughs> and don't do what I did. I just poured it in there. So I've got a crap ton. So that will be bright. Okay. Um, let's see. And then I'm going to do a small amount of the brown oxide. And small amount and with brown oxide I don't use oxides like hardly ever to color my soaps it's just I don't have a brown mica um because I normally don't add brown to my soap normally I just let if it's like a vanilla or a vanillin um I, I let it just discolor on its own but because I don't like necessarily just making brown soap I let the fragrance oil do that but I have I do have the oxide because um, at one point I was going to like get into making, um, handmade makeup and stuff, but so I've got like a bunch of ingredients to do that and I never got around to it. Well, I did, but I just didn't consistently make it to test and try it. And anyway, I gotta get started with this. So let's see. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to my oxide because I don't use it very often. So I can't remember if it disperses well in the soap batter. Or not so if you're ever uncertain if your colorant dispersed as well or not just like kind of pre dilute it I guess is the right word or like get it dispersed in oil um, then it will uh, mix easily into your soap batter sorry I can't think now because I feel rushed okay I'm gonna go ahead and add my beer here's my beer drink we're gonna go ahead and add that in and Let's stir that. And then I gotta get my fragrance oil, um, essential oil in here, excuse me. And I'm doing um, blood orange essential oil to add to that. And I gotta kinda hurry, let me measure this out, hold on. I'm still here, hold on. 
I'm just over here measuring and I can't, I don't have enough room over there to move it. So bear with me for just a second. You can look at my mess in the background and be glad it's not your mess that you got to clean up. All right. Okay, I don't ever use um, orange, or blood orange or um, orange or lemon in soap essential oils because they don't send, they do not tend to stick. Um, but I'm hoping this one will. We'll see. Um, okay. And I don't know, I don't, usually essential oil, oh, you can't see. Um, Usually essential oils don't um, accelerate trace in your soap, but since I don't ever use this, I'm not sure. There's like something on the side of this bowl. What is Let me get a tissue because there's like a fuzz on the side of my bowl here. Like a piece of lint or something. Um, I can't, now I can't see if I got it. Because I can't see. Okay. I think I did. It was just like a little piece of like towel lint. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to do, okay. I don't know if you can see me. Hold on. Let me get where you can see all the bits. Not that you need to because it's whatever. But. I'm going to do more of this and less of the brown. And my batch is about a seven pound batch of soap that I'm making here. And I don't want to stir this too much because I got to be able to incorporate this. So we're going to pour off that much. I'm eyeballing it. I have no plan for design at all. And then I'm going to do a little bit of the brown, about that much. Doesn't seem like very much, but that's fine. I don't want very much brown. So I'm going to add a little bit more of this. Okay. I'm telling y'all, I'm just more of a functional soap maker. I add colors for appeal for people because, you know, people buy by the way things look. Honestly, um, because I've had people that'll look at, um, oh, that's a good color. Okay. So, uh, it's even kind of, kind of pink, but the art. Yeah. Um, I've had people buy, look at soap and they'll not buy it because of a color and buy it because of a color. And so, color does matter in some cases. Not in people cases, but in product cases, it actually does. Matter. Okay, so this orange is more pink. But that's okay. Um, I think when it fully saponifies, it changes more orange. I need to take notes on that and see because I have a couple of different oranges that I use. But um, sometimes I'm bad about remembering which one I used and the color of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add my fragrance, or, excuse me, essential oil to this and stir that in. Make sure it's not gonna do anything crazy. It shouldn't, but you never know. Okay, it's fine. So, um, add that a little bit more. Try and evenly distribute it. So, get that nice and incorporated here. smells really good but the problem like I was telling you earlier is your citrus essential oils tend to not um, stick that well in soap um, or at least in my uh, experience they don't um, and I know people some people will say uh, well, you know add kale and clay or something to help uh, let it what I'm looking for um, adhere to that or whatever but I've done that and I haven't noticed a big difference so um so I guess there's things that you could try to to do um to get the citrusy 
essential oils to stick more, but um, I've not really ever come across a way to do it. They just, you know, essential oils just by their nature are very volatile, which means that they whoosh easily. So, um, and you know, some of your essential oils like patchouli, for example, it's just a um, strong, very strong essential oil that has um, a little more lasting power. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think it's considered more of a resin. I'm not sure on that. I think, even though it's an oil, um, it's like benzoin is more of a resin, you know? Um, benzoin has a very vanilla fragrance, a uh, vanilla note to it. And it's an essential oil, but it's actually a resin. It's really sticky. And patchouli is not sticky, but I do believe it's considered more of a resin. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking now at this point. I may not, but I think I read that somewhere. Uh, I try to learn as much as I can, but then sometimes I feel like my brain can't hold it all. Even though I have a really big forehead. It just can't hold all that information. It gets all mixed up in my head sometimes. So, all right, I'm mixing the brown. When you're mixing your colors, for those of you that are newer to this, Start with your light and then work your way up so that your stick blender doesn't put that color into that, you know. But sometimes I don't worry about it anyway because it's like, especially if it's like a larger amount, it, it's going to be diluted so much it won't affect it unless it's like activated charcoal. And that can sometimes um, transfer over or even if you're activated charcoal because it's very um, fine and goes airborne very easily it'll just scatter out and you'll get like black specks in your stuff and that's annoying. So you have to kind of be careful with activated charcoal. All right, um, so oops. All right, clean up the mess here, hold on. Okay, so what I've got here is it's getting thick, so Oh shit, I gotta move. All right, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but we're gonna do it. Whatever. Okay, my phone, like I got a phone call, but my stuff's getting really thick, so I gotta move. And I'm not even sure how I'm gonna do this. So let me get, oops, crap, might help if you see. Ah, I'm feeling like panicky. You know how it is when you're making soap and everything's like going fast? It's like getting really thick. So, oh, we gotta move fast. And that's probably thick, not from my um, essential oil, but thick from the lye water being warm. So I'm just gonna have to go with it here, guys. Let's see. All right, hopefully you can see. And it was really thick, and I'm just gonna pour it in. Ah. I'm gonna just go with it. You gotta get kind of hurry here, because it's getting, thick and like I said this is probably from my live water it has nothing to do with um, the beer or the essential oil it's gonna be that my live water was warm I can almost guarantee it because it was pretty warm and I never ever soap with warm live water I always soap at room temperature so um, there's that <laughs> But I was in a hurry because I've got crap I've got to do today. And I wanted to go ahead and um, get this made and get it. And now I don't know what I'm going to do with the top. This looks like freaking Neapolitan ice cream. Which is not the look I was going for. I should have thought about that. I mean, it might turn out alright, but... Definitely not what I was going for, <laughs> which happens when you don't plan, right? As long as that changes and goes orange, it might look pretty good. But if it looks more pink, we got some Neapolitan ice cream up in here. Okay, let's see. And you always want to tap it down to get any air bubbles out and stuff. Um, so, let's see. See how pink this is? Jeez, it's like really pink. All right, so I don't know what I'm gonna do to the top, but um, I'm just gonna blob it on like this.
I'm just kind of bobbing it on. I don't know if you can see or not. I'm having to go quick because you probably can't see. Um, because it's thick. Obviously, I can't talk and get stressed at the same time because I lose my train of thought. So I apologize. But I know that you guys that watch this are soap makers, so you get it. Be sweating. Like I'm sweating up in here. Not only because it's probably 90 degrees in my shed because I turned the air off so that y'all could hear me, but I'm hot because I'm just freaking trying to hurry. It stresses me out because, um, you know, you end up with a wasted batch. Not wasted necessarily, but not the way you want it, which is considering I didn't have any expectations because I forgot to think about that because I was too busy trying to think about making this video. Um, so, whew, I'm hot, 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 hot. and I don't have that much brown, which is good, because I didn't want that much brown, but I'm just going to kind of like let it land on top of the pink, and then go through it with a, with a chopstick thing, and we'll do that. I really could have gotten away with using a lot less brown, actually. And I was worried I wasn't going to have enough, but it seems like when you use dark colors, they end up being dominant. I mean, I know that's like common sense because the dark color is going to obviously uh, be darker, but I mean, I'm sweating. Hold on. I can't put my chopstick. Oh my gosh. Chopstick. Where is it? I had it. Ah. I mean, if I cleaned up my soap shed, it might be helpful. I mean, I had it not too long ago. Where did I put it? Oh my gosh. Oh, nope, that's not it. Ah, I can't find it. Crap. Okay. So this is a crap. It's not anywhere. I mean, I know I have it. I had it, but no, I don't. Okay, anyway, so I guess I'm not going to do that. I guess I'm just going to spoon it. Okay, I gotta bang this down on the ground because I don't want the camera to fall. Okay. Actually, that'll be all right. It looks pretty good. I have like a whole air bubble. Oh, I'm gonna hurry. This is getting like so thick. It's not um, wanting to, you know, I could do anything. Okay. All right. So last time I tried to tilt my soap so that you guys could see, I literally almost spilled it out, which was not very comical. So I, I'll just piece it in. I'll just not do it now. I will uh, take a screenshot and I put that at the end of the video. I'm just going to do a few more little loop de loos in here. My nose is running because I'm like sweating so bad. I know y'all can relate because uh, this crap is stressful. Okay, there's that. Okay, so, and I guess I'm not going to put anything on top because it's already fine, but. Um, I'm going to pop this in the refrigerator and I will take a picture, tag it on the end of this video. Now that I'm winded and sweating, I will go. And, um, I hope this was helpful for you guys and definitely try, um, adding beer soap. And like I said, especially at Christmas time, talk to you guys later. Bye.